you why do the Swedish clean tech companies doesn't grow as fast and big as they want to? Well, <clears throat> I think that you know we we need to go back to some cultural issues actually. Uh, in in Sweden, we want to dress everything up in processes. You know, we want to organize this and processes and so on and. Innovation and, and starting a company and being an entrepreneur is not really a process because things change constantly. And, and in a global market, you don't really know what's going to happen next week. So setting up a process that sort of lines out nine, 12 months and this is how we're going to do the thing, I think actually is detrimental. We need to sort of let people get their spirits free. And I think for Swedes, our biggest obstacle is our own fear of not succeeding. And how do you get around that? You know, that's a cultural thing. You know, that's how, we, that's how I was brought up, <laughs> anyway. Uh, and uh, when, you, <clears throat> when you then look at uh, things sitting in the U.S., one thing I hear a lot is that from entrepreneurs is there isn't enough capital. If I only had money, I would do it. And I think that is an easy excuse, and it's very simple to not have to look at other things. Well... No one wants to, no venture wants to give us money. So, you know, um, it's not really anything I can do about it. But I don't believe that. There are a few fundamental differences between a U.S. venture startup and a Swedish venture startup. And just to go a few things. The boards in Swedish venture capital startups are wrong. <laughs> in the U.S., we call them advisory boards. It's the big, important people from industries that can help us. They are on the advisory board because they can help us one or two or three times by opening a door. That's it. What I need as an entrepreneur is I need five other entrepreneurs who's done this two, three times on my board who can roll up their sleeves, get in with me and get this venture off the ground. And I think that is something we could do in Sweden. I don't think that had any effects on our culture thinking. But there is a lot of other issues that I think we could look at. And for clean tech, why are we not successful? Well, we're not out there. There is no Swedish clean tech companies roaming around in, uh, in the United States in any volumes. Uh, I go to a number of conferences. Every clean tech conference in California, there is always references from the major speakers to what they are doing in Sweden. And are there any Swedish companies in the audience who can say, hey, yeah, that's us. We do that. I can't sort of start relationships here. No. There is just a handful, a few. There's a company here in Lund, actually, who is active in, uh, in, in the United States, and uh, a few others. But, uh, you know, if we're not there, we're not going to do any business. We're used to energy policy in, in Sweden, taking 20, 30 years to change. That's a sort of slow walking pace that we have in this area. Now when we are changing the energy policy in Europe, take out the zero. One, two years maximum. And I'm very worried. And, and when I hear five to ten years, sorry, too late. The market will be full, all the products sold, all the innovation industrialized. We have to speed up considerably in order to take market shares on what is now evolving in the European, the Chinese, the Brazilian market, and also in the U.S., of, of course. And I fully agree with Joran that uh, you have to be there. It's more head-on that is needed. The system is there to help you, but if you wait for the system, you're also out of market. I mean, you as companies give the impulses into the system, uh, and they should, should answer to this. But 30 years, forget it. You've been talking about another solution of making it easier for Swedish companies to get out in the world. What, what's your point? I think uh, there's been said a lot of things, and I, I think I could talk here for three hours just responding to some of the comments. Uh, but, uh, but I think, uh, as, as uh, Christopher put, that global is one of the key words. Uh, accelerated, we're a fabulous semiconductor company. And we were, we were facing global uh, competition from day one. Uh, the competition was not on the other side of Zuriplan in Stockholm. It was in China or in Israel and the U.S. Uh, and um, I think they said, why is foreign investment not 
It's good. It seems like uh, it's some common sense that we need to keep investors in, in Sweden. No, we don't. I think, I think we need to make it easy for, to make investments, regardless where the money comes from. That's one thing. I had a board member, a U.S. board member, who, who said, why are you complaining about the U.S. investors in Sweden? We, we, we're pouring down 30 million U.S. dollars into your company in Sweden, even though you're headquartered in the U.S. What's the big deal? It's great. So that's one thing. And then why should we have manufacturing in Sweden? I mean, manufacturing will always be in low-cost countries. So have it now in Asia, then in Africa, and then back to Sweden when we, <laughs> we're on, on, on the bottom. Uh, and, and having said that, I think we, as Swedes, we are actually quite great. But I think the Swedish mentality is more of a, a COO, operating uh, executional, but not very good at sales, uh, if, you, if you put it, put it just a stereotype. Uh, but many, many good people are in, in the U.S. in Silicon Valley, they're not visible uh, since they are under U.S.-owned companies, perhaps, where they have, have uh, development and R&D in, in, in Sweden and so forth. And I think for us, as, as a semiconductor company, we need, any semiconductor company need 30 million U.S. dollars just to get to the point where you're profitable. And how do you finance a, a company uh, that, is, that needs 30 million U.S. dollars from the beginning, you know it, with seed capital from uh, Skåne. Uh, it's probably difficult, but we need to, to, <laughs> we need to find means how to uh, make big companies. And, and typically, not all companies need much money to become big, but, but, but I think we need to think big, we think, uh, need to think global. And actually, Sweden is one of the hotspots in, 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 uh, in international uh, venture capital investment, so we're not that bad, actually. I think the most important thing by any means is, uh, and I use the analogy when you, when I'm starting my lawnmower at home, I have to prime the engine first. I have to pump some gas into the engine to start it. And the same thing applies to an export market. You know, how do you grow business in export markets? You need the reference projects. And if you can't finance it, these projects yourself or through the government funding, then you need some sort of co-financing. And you shouldn't be discriminatory against developing countries or non-developing countries because if you get that first initial project off the ground, you have a local reference project for future sales. And those are the future sales that are going to lead to job growth in Sweden, expansion, and a larger tax base. So it's very little money on the input side, I getting the reference project off the ground, which is going to lead to the growth in definitely key markets and then secondary and tertiary markets as well. Our mission is to, to supply a, a regional-based um, environments like this, incubators, but also supply capital in, in very early stages b before, for instance, in, in, in industry funding. I would say that um, Swedes are very innovative, and uh, that has been mentioned, and that is probably a gap too. You know, maybe we are too innovative. There is a very big gap between the, the good thinking and the business case. And that means it's really hard for it to find the business case, to get the finances, to develop the issues and put them on the market. And there are so many good examples, I guess. Uh, and where we are really advanced in, in our thinking, and it really takes time before it's been put on the market. And also we were really lousy on um, when we had these good ideas to, to try to make business on them. We're living in, in a type of another paradox because <coughs> the context now is,